Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Stitch TV show. We have a very special episode. Uh, we're very excited to be talking to the president of QT Fabrics, Ken Gamash. Hi, everyone. It's Lynn, and this is Ken Gamash. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thank you for inviting me, Pam and Lynn. I really appreciate it. So we wanted to talk to Ken a little bit about digital fabric printing because it's something that's kind of emerged in the last little bit, feels like. Maybe a lot longer for you, Ken, because you've been living it. Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, we've been, uh, our company, QT Fabrics, has been, uh, was a printer in the United States until 2009. And we actually installed the digital print machine <clears throat> for sampling purposes way back in, I think, in 2006. So we had our feet wet at that time. It was an emerging technology, but it certainly helped us understand the uh, capabilities of digital printing pretty early on uh, compared to the traditional screen printing that's ongoing right now. So uh, thanks, thanks for allowing me to come on board to at least explain uh, my understanding of digital printing and how it helps uh, not only consumers, but also uh, our shop owners and uh, our, us as a supplier of fabric to the shop on. So can you tell us some of the history about QT Fabrics? Sure, QT Fabrics is part of a, a corporation, if you will, uh, called Cranston Printworks. Uh, we have our roots back to 1807. Our founders, if you want to call it our company founders, uh, that's when we began in the United States in 1807. Um, that's where our roots go back. Um, actually, there's only been um, four different owners of the company through this 200 something years. Wow. And most recently in 1987, uh, the Rockefeller family that owned the company from 1920 through 1987, sold the company to all the employees. So the employees, we became an ESOP company way back in 1987, one of the first companies actually uh, in the country to do that. Um, but it was uh, very helpful as there's been a lot of loyalty for all employees because they're part owners, which is cool. Um, just a little bit further back, our history, uh, 1807 I mentioned, um, that was actually the beginning of a, uh, of a plant that was owned or built by a person called Samuel Slater. Samuel Slater was an Englishman who actually uh, came to the United States, stealing all the plans to begin to build a print machine in the States. He's actually called the founder of the American Industrial Revolution. So a lot of history of our company. And uh, we had one time, uh, Cranston Printworks did at one time, had three print plants in the United States, uh, one in North Carolina, one in Rhode Island, and one in Massachusetts. I was in Massachusetts plant and have been with our company since 1978. So uh, not only did I have been working there since 78, my father worked at the print plant and my grandfather did. So since 1940, there's been a gamash on the payroll. So I've got a long history of uh, textiles and mostly in the manufacturing side. And uh, now as we closed our last plant in uh, 2009 due to price constraints, uh, you know, we paid good wages. We had all the environmental concerns, but we were just getting priced out of the market as most of our competitors went overseas to enjoy the lower priced uh, labor market pool. So unfortunately, uh, at one time, our company had 2,000 employees, and now we're just hovering about 100 in our company right now. And oh, there's only 28 of us in the textile arm of our company. So that's a little bit of the history um, about QT Fabrics. Most recently, we were called uh, Quilting Treasures. And then for the sewers that are out there that we remember a name called VIP Fabrics. So that was us also. VIP Fabrics is pretty much on its last legs. Uh, we only sold VIP Fabrics to the chains, Walmart, Joann's. Uh, and back in the day, we actually did sell to the independent shops, uh, but stopped doing so about five, six years ago. So that's the, I think a little bit of a high level history of the company. I found some VIP Fabrics in my stash, like le last year. You would. <laughs> <laughs> I had in Cranston. I think it's related. I honestly were sitting here going, I wonder if you do. I have some because I have a pretty big stash. You can see behind me, I do a lot of really intricate um, piecing with lots of different fabrics. And so I'm like, hmm, I bet I've ran across one or two. Yes. <laughs> so one, cool. 
Um, yeah, at one time, VIP or Cranston Printworks was the largest printer fabric. Well, obviously, in the United States, but we like to also say that we're um, we're printing close to uh, 200 million yards a year yeah. at these three plants, which so is just incredible uh, volume, yeah. uh, not only for the over counter, but for the home apparel. And, um, uh, right. Yeah, that so just makes me and, like drool. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, we know from working with you all for a number of years that there's quite an extensive collection of designs. Like how far back does that fabric design catalog go that sure. you all have access to? Um, at the last plant that remained standing in Webster, um, we, would, uh, we had books <laughs> of fabric swatches that we maintained in these archives. And the book could fill, oh heck, uh, a 12 by 12 room, multiple, multiple shelves all over. Um, and we have books going back to 1850. So you could turn these old pages and there's little swatches of two by two uh, inch squares. And we have swatches from way back when. And um, so we've kept those, kept those uh, thankfully, and it's part of our history and legacy. And we do from time to time refer back, maybe not to the uh, older ones in the 1800s, but certainly maybe in the 40s, 50s, in that range to uh, just get some different ideas of, of uh, uh, patterns or designs or images that we'd like to uh, reintroduce again. So it's kind of cool to be able to flip through those things, but it, it would take you hours and hours and hours to go through every single page, um, but they're there for, for us to view. I would be lost in that room for a considerable amount of time. <laughs> yes, and I would say also before, um, uh, even digital capabilities or, or being able to save a file on a, a computer. Uh, we even have original artwork in full form, hand painted on acetate and sometimes on paper, sometimes on fabric. And we have, oh my goodness, I couldn't tell you how many stacks of wide uh, uh, draw files. Uh, I would say about, we have four stacks of them at least six feet tall. And um, it's incredible. Same little little draws you pull out, and there's 40 or 50 designs in there. So oh really cool. A lot of history. A lot of history. That is amazing. So when did QT first get into this digital printing? Sure. Um, in a, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we did at least sampling for in-house in-plant sampling uh, processes uh, way back in, uh, in um, 2006. Uh, in 2013, we decided to test the waters uh, with digital by offering uh, cheater quilts or digital quilt tops. Right. And so we became, we came up with that, and we did that uh, for a good season or two. Uh, the problem was we were printing fabric on digital um, processing, but when we had the production fabric, it was being done on the traditional screen printing, and the color matching wasn't always the same. So we backed down for a few years, um, but then laid low in a sense until digital printing uh, plants uh, began to invest in high speed machines that allowed suppliers like us to uh, be able to purchase at a much, much lower price. Oh, okay. And so in 2018, um, we decided to go all digital. And so we converted over and uh, at that time, and have been doing so um, for that number of seasons. So we come up with something every quarter, but um, we decided to go all digital. And a lot of benefits uh, to digital printing for a supplier specifically, uh, for artists, that we now can print uh, images that we could know, couldn't uh, convey on fabric with the traditional screen printing or flatbed screen printing. So um, that's one reason, first of all, it's the artistic interpretation or being to convey what someone actually even took a photograph of or actually designed on their CAD screens that we could replicate uh, easier or more accurately with digital. So think of digital printing of much like your paper printer at home. That you maybe take a photo and then you can print it out. It's very similar technology at least, but uh, the process to get a photo and to convert that over to flatbed screens is um, very, very difficult and not very well achieved. So, um, we, um, so that's the digital store, at least that's just converting over to digital. So we talked about 
like the detail of design. And I think we've seen that in some of the more recent lines that y'all have had come out. What about um, flexibility on repeats? Because in screen printing, you're kind of limited because screens are pretty well set in certain widths. Are, are you finding more flexibility in that way? Great question. Uh, yes, these um, the repeat, if you want to call it repeats, we're limited right now on screen uh, flatbed of a 36 inch repeat. Um, so that's the limitation of the current flatbed print process. So it's one yard. Uh, with digital, that's, go ahead. <laughs> that's still bigger than the traditional. Um, traditional meaning 24 or eight yeah. or, or, okay. Um, so we actually, uh, you'll see panels out in the marketplace right now that are actually on screens. Uh, and we, we did quite a few of them also uh, on screen. So 36 is something was available. Maybe not all companies engaged in that, um, depending on what designs or uh, designers or artists right. use that maybe would like to design a panel. Um, we did quite a bit of that uh, as a company. And so we would employ that 36 inch uh, repeat. Um, so uh, on the digital side, um, it's sort of unlimited. Um, you could have, you could in theory have a repeat that could go on for yards and yards and yards. The longest or the furthest we've gone out to is 110 inch for a repeat. So, um, but the capabilities actually could be much larger. Oh yeah, you could just print a whole king size top. Yes, you could. You could have a mural that goes around your room, uh, which is kind of cool. So, so, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> my little ideas in my head are like, oh my gosh, this could yeah. be. Uh, well, it's really cool. It, it's this fascinating what technology has done, and uh, absolutely. And, and our our industry is sort of doing printing, uh, flatbed printing, somewhere in the '60s. So it's been a 50 years old, and so there had to be another step of an evolution um, that needed to take place. And so we're in the midst of it now. Uh, or you know, it's it's not going away. Right. Uh, that my personal opinion, it's it's going to be before long. All companies will eventually jump on the digital bandwagon. I see many of our competitors uh, do digital and mix in with their uh, flatbed printing. Uh, we just decided to jump off the cliff and hopefully it all works out. So we, we've gone down that path. So, so uh, God, please, God, please. Well, it, you just, you've gone into all digital since 2018? Yes, yes. And it's because you, this is where you see the industry going. Yeah, I not only see the industry going, uh, but there's many benefits, uh, say, for uh, uh, I'll start with suppliers because I know our company's better. <laughs> in a sense, that the minimum printings or minimum print size, in a sense, we could do a digital of one yard if we wanted to print, you know, in in the plant. And sort of that's companies like Spoonflower does something like that right now. That's, right. Yeah. Do. So as a supplier, um, in order to get the benefits of not printing one yard in a large surcharge, uh, we have other minimums. We, we can go 250, 300 yards as a, as a printing, or, or uh, as opposed to screens. Screens was, um, if you, we're going to have a video out soon on our website that will show the labor that actually that takes to do screen printing. Well, first of all, you have to create a screen. Uh, and a screen actually can only hold one color, and you know what that color is for uh, on your fabric, those little dots at the salvages on the edges, every color represents a screen. And so that's a mechanical square frame that a screen has been etched and color goes through holes that have been engraved. We can print up to 18 screens on one machine, uh, on one design, if you want to call it. And so by by that virtue, the plant wants higher minimums. On a 36 inch repeat that I mentioned, if we wanted to do a panel printing, I'm sorry, I'm waving my hands all over the place. Um, <laughs> we would need to print 3000 yards. So wow. a, tra a traditional uh, bolt of fabric is 15 yards that we sell to a shop. That means we have to convince 200 shops to buy that one pattern or that one color, one design. Right. Going down to say 500 or 300, we only have to need we only need 20, and so in the past, all our suppliers in the same boat is still printing on digital. I'm sorry, on flatbed printing. Um, 
you have to buy 3,000 yards. Well, maybe you only sold 1,000. Right. You do that extra 2,000 yards that eventually has to be closed out at a much reduced price or just carry that inventory for, for a long period of time. This is a, a panacea in a sense that you now do not need to have such high minimum printings and therefore can only, buy, only need to buy what you didn't want to sell, which is great benefit for the supplier. Um, I mentioned an artistic uh, version of digital allows us for multi-layering of, of looks, not so flat in a sense. We're able to engage in very uh, multi-dimensional level colors on top of each other, which could not readily be achieved on screens. Um, so the other benefits as we go from suppliers to the shops, um, when I mentioned the minimum print, um, we now can engage with shops to do custom work for them. So now you're a shop and say, well, right now we have a minimum of 500 yards. Um, but a shop or a shop hop, a group of shops to get together, so they can have a category or an image group or groupings of patterns. So we can design for them and allow them to have their own custom work that would in the past be thousands of yards, which would prevent them from doing so. Yeah, we, we've done some shop hops locally around here. And I know every few years they may have a certain fabric that they g went together and had printed. And I know they always had leftovers, you yeah. know, because of the minimums of, you know, even though there were a lot of shops, you know, it was sure. just that weekend, that kind of stuff. So this makes it so much better for that kind of um, shop experience, too, where it could be unique to not only the shop experience, but also to the region of the com country or, you know, I can see a lot of ways to apply that. Yes. Yeah, there would always be this kind of sound of music effect where you'd go to the shop and all of a sudden after the shop pop closed, everyone had an apron or a shirt or something made of fabric and you're like, oh, they all got into the curtains. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I have some, they did one of, Georgia, we're in Georgia, of course. Yeah. They did one of all these kind of iconic Georgia things with, they, what, they didn't put the names of some of the images, but you could tell it was a Coke bottle. <laughs> <laughs> and you know like the fox theater and just some atlanta type of things and stone mountain and but i still have some of that fabric <laughs> <laughs> i have an apron <laughs> apron shorts yeah and scrunchy like all of it all, all of it, it. yeah <laughs> Which reminds me, I need to get some out and put it in here. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ken, what are some of the benefits that quilters get from digitally printed fabric? I think there's a difference on the quality of the fabric that it's printed on. Is that right? Yes, it is. Um, while um, the fabric um, is the same, we call it 60 by 60, uh, 60 threads, uh, warp and weft. Um, uh, that's pretty traditional. There's uh, something about the, uh, the the width of the threads is another uh, denominator, but that's the same, um, both in digital and flatbed. Also the same as the color systems or the dyes that we are using. So that's the same. So the same, say, quality of the dyes, the same quality of the finishes uh, that we apply or silicon or silica, uh, silicone at the finishing process to make it nice and soft. The biggest difference um, is, the, is the preparation or the weaving of the cotton themselves, the cotton itself. Um, without getting into too much detail, um, a digital um, print machine actually sprays colors and with thousands of jets and at each uh, at each interval. And it's just, it's really quick and it's a computer program and it's all um, applying color fast really quickly. Um, we use, uh, the digital print machines use something called combed cotton. And so the process of the, uh, the weaving of the threads themselves is called combed. And what they're using is longer fibers, cotton fibers. So there's less uh, fraying, if you will. It's also more tightly wound, wounded, wounded, wound, <laughs> wounded. Hmm. It works. <laughs> sure. <laughs> It's, it's totally the woundedness is higher. <laughs> so, um, by doing so, there's less extra fibers that are sticking out. You want to have as smooth a surface as possible because the sprayers are really, really close to the fabric. But by doing that extra twisting and having longer fibers, 
the cotton itself is stronger and more tightly wound. And so it has actually, it costs more for that processing as opposed to the carded cotton, which is used in a flatbed screen printing. Carded is shorter fibers, still 60 by 60, don't get me wrong on that side, but it, it can have more frays because the color in the print process is actually a blade that's forcing color into the fabric and it's saturating a little more deeply. So you can have fray, but the fray is actually being dyed and um, you will have more room for forgiveness on a, on a flatbed printing. With a digital, if there was a uh, impurities or not having uh, fiber sticking out, since the, it's all jets, you can have possibilities of say white or misprints. So uh, the carded cotton, the combed cotton is the major difference and the only difference in the, at least the uh, preparation uh, and the processing side of uh, the cotton. Very cool. I was bored there. I can't believe it. No, I, I'm sitting here <laughs> thinking, honestly, I'm here for the nerdiness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, so the major difference is I got out of bed and my hair is like this. Or I got out of bed and I actually combed my hair, and now that's comb cotton. That's literally what was going through my mind. Yeah, way to go, way to go. <laughs> so are you bedhead? <laughs> I keep it short, so I'm not saying you. <laughs> oh, I, like I, I look like so that. much better brushing my hair. There way you go. <laughs> So is there any difference in terms of like the shrinkage or any ex like long-term light exposure, any difference in how the digitally printed fabric reacts? Sure. No, no is the bottom line answer. Um, whether uh, fabric is printed uh, both flatbed or in digital uh, plants are required. Also, I'm hoping all suppliers require all the physical testing on every uh, sample of every single print lot. Sure. Yeah. And so we have light fast, you have uh, abrasion, uh, you have weight of fabric. Uh, we do that also. And then we do independent testing uh, as, a, as an audit check. Um, but all the same standards uh, that is instituted by a square um, uh, um, industry specific requirements are being met. And we would have never gone over to digital printing if we had a, 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 a lower quality product. So, and having that background in the production and manufacturing, uh, we know what the requirements are and then make sure they were met. So are there other benefits to shop owners um, with yeah, the, Yeah, there's, there's a couple, I think for the shop owner specifically, there's two things. First of all, we can have a wider array of patterns to be offered. Oh yeah. Because we can invest, if you want to call it, in not having to make an investment in inventory, so you can offer more SKUs. That's number one. Number two, um, we can offer reprints or continue to print designs that are working well. Because in the past, it's, you know, it's, it's always a, I'm sorry, I'm always showing things. There's a lowering rate of return. I know, first get your first orders, your first order come up really high and then as it gets it gets lower and lower and lower sure so consumers would go into a shop and hopefully they would buy that bolt or they didn't buy the bolt of fabric or a yard of fabric on the bolt and they'd come back three months later could be gone and shop owner how come the supplier is not printing this again well you remember what i said earlier if it was a panel we need to go back for a thousand yards or three thousand yards well we, we we don't have to do that now we can go in for that lower minimum and actually allow lines to be have longer life, shelf life, uh, both on our shelves and our warehouse and in the shops themselves. I I just think that's so beneficial for shops from the standpoint of, you know, they may have a class that just hit in their area and everybody's enamored by the sample or enamored by like a one block wonder and everybody loves this one specific bolt that's created by this one block wonder and it takes you know six yards per person that just to me opens up the shop to say this class is successful this sample's been successful i want to buy more yards and you know and then i just think regionally it's exciting from the standpoint of you know you get shops in georgia or you get shops in Alaska and they want Alaska theme, you know, everybody goes on cruises and 
does the Alaska quilt shops. Not to say I've done that, but I do, I have. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you want to buy that fabric that's unique to that shop or unique to that geographical area. I just think I'm, I'm excited that this exists, you know, and it gives us more opportunities. Yeah. And, and, and make the, I guess the biggest downside still as production uh, fabrics, uh, very little is being printed in the States any longer. Um, not only you have to buy a digital machine, but you have to have the processing beforehand, bleach the fabric, get it mercerized, all those steps, and then have the finishing processing. You know, there are a few plants, um, one that I can think of right now that's uh, doing it, but unfortunately their cost are, are, is extremely high and uh, very limited in capacity, meaning they can't really output enough uh, to really make a difference in the sense for our, our country to come back on board and make the investment wholesale to be able to print in the States. Right. Um, I mentioned Spoonflower, or, and there's other companies obviously that escape my mind that do this. Um, you know, getting a digital print machine is a much lower investment now than it was five years ago or even two years ago. Uh, I think your plasma TVs when they first came out, you know, it was five, six thousand dollars. Right. Now it's, it's so much uh, cheaper to, uh, to, to get. So someone, someone, some smart person is the challenge out there that um, once it's printed on the digital machine, um, to be able to finish it somehow on that machine. Um, and having the, uh, right now we're using what we call FRC, uh, fiber active colors that are dyed into the fibers and you know, it's molecular, molecularly bound and it, it's dyed. Um, there are pigment dyes out there, but the hand and the finish that can be done, uh, it's, it's not the same. I, I think right. consumers and shop owners want to have that soft feel, that yeah. heavy feel. And that's the next big hurdle uh, that if someone comes up with that, then I see printing being done back here in the States uh, in a larger scale. So you talked about some of the design differences that you've seen since you moved to digital printing. I know uh, one of your designers, Osla Mason, has really been able to like recreate artwork. And I know Dan Morris is another popular one. So um, one of the reasons that we're doing the interview, not just because you're super cool and we like talking about fabric, but um, also because there's uh, kind of an, uh, an issue that came out of American Quilt Retailer. And so I was reading that and and noticed the interview with Dan. And can you talk a little bit about what he's seen as a designer and, and how the, the move to digital printings affected his ability to work? Sure. Um, Dan has, uh, was super excited. Dan's been working with us for a good five years, Dan Morris. And um, he's uh, prolific in his output, uh, both on, if you want to call it flatbed uh, screen, uh, printing, but he was... Uh, anxiously waiting for us to convert over to digital. His methods of creating these multi-layered uh, right. colors um, is um, a great reason why uh, we've been very successful in the conversion over. He's jumped on board and his secret method, and he's never to be telling anyone how he does it, but um, he has really worked out certain techniques uh, that allowed us to um, have images that uh, or designs that people had yet to see. So we got the early jump in the digital uh, bandwagon and uh, Dan and Osella, uh, because they could just take a photo and just print it. And that is a tremendous, uh, it opens us up as fabric suppliers to a, a, a tremendous array of, of, of images or photos, or it doesn't matter. It just, everything's open to us. There are some limitations though. We still, we can't print, um, uh, metallic gold, say, gold flakes, because the uh, that can't be sprayed into these really tiny sprays, or a pigment white, uh, white on white for consumers. Uh, that's still limited. Um, I, there's been faux printing white, and there's been faux printing metallic gold that goes on digital. Um, so we've been able to uh, accommodate that and work around that. Um, but for both artists that um, were super excited, uh, first, the interpretation, or actually the fabric that actually comes out after they worked hard on their computers or for Arcello, working in her studio and her techniques on paint or acrylic painting that five years ago it couldn't be achieved. And so that's the exciting part and, and keeps their creative juices going to, uh, to move on. Now, uh, Dan certainly uh, does fabric and Arcello now, but um, or can print on those mediums. You know, they have other industries or other businesses they're part of, but 
Um, we've been really uh, extremely pleased about our, uh, our decision to move digital and both artists obviously uh, related uh, to go down that path. So sorry, I can give up the end secrets. So, but um, these are. <laughs> we tried, Pam. No, we, tried. Know, no. <laughs> we tried to break him and nothing. 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 No, no, no. no. Crackable. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what are other like hidden benefits for digital hmm. printing? Hidden benefits. I know we had that. We talked about that question. Spoiler alert! It's an environmental impact. Oh, thank you, thank you. Okay. <laughs> that. Did anybody else hear that? It was just me. Is that my? No, special? I think it was just a voice in your head. Oh, okay. Environmental <laughs> impact. I remember now. <laughs> uh, um, the process, the environmental uh, impact has been <laughs> great. It um, the, the, when I mentioned the screen printing uh, process and all the colors and all those. Um, uh, process to go on. It uses a tremendous amount of color. Uh, you water, first of all. Um, it's about 15 gallons of water per yard for 60 liters. And uh, by going digital, there's less to clean up and there's less to process. It's been reduced by almost 75%. So environmentally, digital printing is a benefit for our planet, along with the color and chemicals that also go along with that. The reduction is much less than that but certainly a savings both for an, and the environment side. Boy, am I glad that I heard that voice. <laughs> it's really good. I, I have to <laughs> admit, really when reading the notes, you know, to prepare for the interview and stuff, that I thought was so incredibly yeah. amazing that just the saving on water alone yeah. is incredible. And I think, I think that's important to quilters. Yeah. No. And, it, it, you know, and, it, and it's not only for quilting industry, but the apparel industry has been getting into digital. Mm -hmm. All the different uh, industries that, that are printing on fabric have, have gone down this path. So uh, we're just a little bit later as an industry of getting on board. Um, but I, I thank you for the, uh, the prep on the, uh, the benefits uh, to help our planet. So a lot of good stuff digital has um, digital yeah. is, is, is doing. So I, I really foresee uh, more and more. I know, uh, and the, the cost is uh, relative. I would say it's, it's a little bit of an increase, um, but certainly has been coming down as these plants have made these higher investments in the, in the high speed uh, machines. So we keep our prices pretty stable in a sense uh, against the digital, um, but because there's so much benefits on the back side of not having to buy so much inventory. So um, that's kind of our payback in a sense. We'll keep the pricing at least lower than some of our competitors on the digital side. Uh, but we've gone in both feet, so it's worked out pretty well. So, Ken, anything we haven't covered yet that you want to let us know, either about digital printing or QT? Did I hear a hint? Hint? Or nothing? Yet? No, there's no hint for this one. <laughs> it's all you, buddy. Mark's like, did we miss something? <laughs> <laughs> Could I put a little plug in for uh, QT Fabrics just for a little bit? Absolutely. Uh, of course. Things. So, um, we're unlike, I guess that's. Is this where it gets cut off on the live feed later? <laughs> yeah. You're breaking up. <laughs> edit, yeah. edit this out, please. No, <laughs> we'll fix it in post. <laughs> um, we're pretty proud of our, we're pretty proud of our team. First of all, our salespeople are all employees. So everyone that touches our fabrics, uh, in a sense, uh, is an employee owner of QT. And so that's kind of a, a great benefit and a lot of loyalty that I think we've uh, achieved when relationships with shop owners. Because shop owners obviously are owners of their own company and they have to manage that. So there's a relationship that um, we, we try to cement all the time. Not saying we're perfect, guys. It's just something that uh, I think is a real asset to um, our industry that we have loyal, dedicated, long-term employees that are out there selling our product and have a good understanding of what digital fabric is. Um, and so I think that's helpful for our shop owners to have that relationship with us. and. Uh, and I, I really appreciate this opportunity to speak with not only your your, your viewership, who may be consumers or, or, or sewers and quilters, and also some shop owners. So I just want to say thank you to everyone. So make sure you look for QT fabrics in your shops. <laughs> Is that we, then, then you're going to come back on live and you're going to go, okay, thanks for coming these <laughs> earlier comments. <laughs> Well, you know, I think I think just learning about the digital printing process, uh, I think consumers will start searching that out with the trend of, 
you know, looking for more sustainable, you know, ways for our planet and environment. Um, I, I just think that's so important now. And, you know, I think consumers are bold enough to go into their shops and say, hey, do you have QT fabrics because of what they are doing to help? And so I think that that's exciting. Well, thank you. Yeah. And there's a way on the QT website where you can go and find a shop that carries based on like zip code. Right. Or location. So both online and in person. So yep. go to qtfabrics.com and do that. And, and <laughs> both Pam and I will say, both Pam and I will say, yes, QT has sponsored our show, but I honestly keep every QT fabric that they, you know, allow us to show on our show. I okay. beg Pam for parts of them. And I used some yesterday. So it's, I use it. It's not just a, I love the designs. So. Okay. You, so every quarter you're getting a sample box of our, of our. Oh, uh, we get some. Yeah. yeah we the show. Have, some is not all. True. <laughs> over here. <laughs> well, good, good. Well, good luck to you guys. It was really, it was fun. It was fun. It was a lot, uh, a little nervous getting on board and thinking about it, but uh, it's fun. Yeah. It's just talking. You know, relaxing. It's just, You're just talking to us so uh, we can talk about anything. Yeah, I show up to these thinking like, I'm just talking to my mom. For all I know, she's the only one watching. <laughs> <laughs> There's more than two people watching, right? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Come on. We got you some had me go, okay, bedhead, comb cotton. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> no worries. Very good. Uh, well, thank you again for joining us. We're going to yeah. sign off for now. Uh, if you're new to the show and have sought us out, check out the rest of our videos. You can find them at youtube.com slash the Stitch TV show or at the Stitch TV show.com. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank you.